Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another vlog. In today's vlog, we're actually gonna be continuing the backpack that we started last week. A lot of you guys asked to see more of that, so we're gonna be showing a lot more of that process in today's video, as well as I'm gonna share with you guys the SketchUp file that I've been creating of the house, because several of you commented that you wanted to see that as well. But I have some pretty exciting news, and that is that Molly and I's favorite part of the day, which is the morning or most productive part of the day for us, has a sponsor now, and that is Morning Brew. So what I wanna do is share with you guys my morning routine. It's just a super basic thing, but I'm pretty religious about doing these three or four things every single morning. It keeps me uh, very productive and on task. So yeah, first things first, Let's make a nice cup of coffee. The very first thing that I do is I grab my bullet journal. This is my preferred method for staying on track. I like to actually write things out for a to-do list. So every single morning, I'm going to kind of do a brain dump on this page and say everything that it is that I would like to get done today. And then I'll also add in the things that I didn't get done yesterday. And that just really helps me stay on track throughout the day. And then next, I'll open up my laptop and I will start categorizing all of our transactions within our budgeting app because budgeting is really important to Molly and I so that we can uh, make sure that all of our goals and everything are aligning with reality is the way I like to say it. Make sure that we're not living beyond our means. And then next after that, I will head to emails because you know, emails is everybody's favorite thing to do. So I'll go through and I'll uh, basically archive or delete everything that's not important. And I'll get all the emails set aside that are important. I'll answer a handful of them and then save the rest for later in the day. But while I'm doing this, there is one email that I do like to read every morning. And I was reading it before they actually reached out to us and asked to sponsor the channel, and that is Morning Brew. So if you've never heard of Morning Brew, it is a free daily email newsletter. It is full of business, finance, tech industry, all kinds of stuff. It keeps you up to date with the world in just five minutes. And it's something that I've been reading on a daily basis for quite a while now. And the reason is, is because all of the information that I've gotten from it, and also it helps me uh, look at one sort of source and be able to get a good overview of what's happening in all the areas that I care about. Molly and I are avid investors. We believe in investing your money and actually keeping up with industry and you know trying to stay on top of things. And this has been a great resource for us to be able to do that. And it is free, it is absolutely free. You can sign up in the link in the description below. It takes 15 seconds, it's that easy. In fact, today, some crazy news I saw on there is that Google has said that they are going to be sort of phasing out their targeted ad campaigns by the end of the year and gonna start doing some different things privacy, privacy related, which is massive news for basically every industry on the planet and uh, it could impact our jobs in a negative way in one part, in a positive way in another part. So it's really interesting news on there. Also, I saw on there this morning that Netflix is doing a shorts thing now, a vertical shorts thing similar to TikTok, which is an interesting concept, but it's just all interesting stuff that I've read on there. It takes no time at all. If you don't like it, you can always unsubscribe. It literally takes 15 seconds to check it out and uh, I think you'll enjoy it. So if you like to, again, check the link in the description below and sign up and let us know what you think about it in the comments section below. And now let's get to work on this backpack.
this really needs to go like that. If that goes like that, then once I do the flip. <laughs> On a scale from one to ten, how hard? Um, sewing's like a nine. Honestly, sewing is way harder than woodworking, way harder than metalworking, way harder than most things I've ever done because you have to think of things completely backwards. Like you can't, the order of operations is so different. It's like, the only, way I can, the only thing I can compare it to is like 3D printing, how 3D printing builds on layers and then ultimately it comes out to be something really unique. Sewing is very similar to where like you have to think every aspect through and not only are you doing it backwards, you're also doing it inside out. <laughs> oh my god. So, yeah, I have much respect for people who can sew. It is very difficult. Not to discourage anyone because what I'm doing now is a little bit more complex as far as like the manufacturing techniques that I'm trying to emulate here. It's a little bit more complicated. If you want to get into sewing, there are much simpler approaches to all the techniques that I'm currently doing. Uh, and if you just start watching some YouTube videos, and maybe even we'll do one, a simple sewing tutorial, making basic bags that don't have all these different liners and folds, insides and outs, and all that makes the process so much simpler. So don't be discouraged. <laughs> this is only what, you like your second or third backpack? Yeah, but I've also sewed a lot of bags. Like I have sewed a lot of bags that I failed and didn't use. Like I've probably done 20 to 30 bags now at this point. Uh, not with this machine. This is the, this is a new machine to us and I've probably only done two or three things on this machine. While Dylan continues to work, I'm gonna make a Home Depot run because why not? That sounds like fun to get a few tubs so we can organize our gear closet and all of this tree climbing stuff that Dylan got because he's gonna be cutting down lots of trees in the backyard coming soon. So I'm gonna run and do that and I will be back. So I'm working on this section here and this is where I'm at. This is where I just stopped off in the last clip. And basically I have all the layers here and I've got my buckles and things laid out and this is kind of how I want it to look. But how do you actually make these edges finished so that it looks like this. Well, actually, the way you do that is you sew this inside out. So I'm gonna set this up and flip everything uh, right side facing in, and I'll show you what that looks like before I sew it. So here's everything turned inside out. You can see we have the pocket liner here. Then if I actually flip this over, you can see roughly what it's going to look like on the front. And then I also have my buckles slid in here. And that way when they get sewed across here and it flips inside out, it will look like this one. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a stitch down all three of these sides and leave this top side open. This top side's gonna get sewn into the backpack later. So I'm gonna leave that open. It's also gonna give me a spot to actually flip this whole panel back, the, the right side back out. So I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Also, I've got my zipper here. I've got it slightly open. Uh, that way I don't sew into the, to the actual zipper pull itself. But I'm gonna sew all the way across these zippers. I'm gonna go back and forth a few times to lock those in place. And then that hole right there is what I'll be able to slide the zipper open with and flip it inside out. Sounds complicated, but it's really pretty darn simple. All right, so this is done and sewed around the edges. Let's flip it back right side out. And there you go. You can see when I unzip this, there is a lined pocket inside, and I have my uh, buckles down here that are integrated into 
uh, the seam now, just like this one over here. I just need to work on these corners and get everything pushed out, and uh, this will this part of the backpack will be good to go. You good? No. What'd you do? I bought a broken box. <laughs> I didn't even realize it. And Dylan said, you bought a broken box. How did you miss that? And I said, I did not say it like that. What are you that? talking about? How did I not see that? <laughs> like the whole... <laughs> Guess the organizing is going to get put on pause where I can do those boxes. This is the most Molly oh, thing. <laughs> you were in the store for so long too. You were like <laughs> looking at these, like trying to figure out which ones you wanted. Literally and I then had all of this, this. sprawled on the ground to make sure these fit this way. <laughs> so this was the right size. Didn't even see that. <laughs> it's like not even a small crack, like it's huge. It's okay, sweetie. Now I'm not good at I wanted to talk about the sewing machine for a second. This is the Sailrite Fabricator machine. Sailrite actually sent us this machine a while back and I feel really bad because we haven't been able to show it off in any videos. I've been dying to use it, but I haven't really had a good place for it, nor have I had really the time to be doing this stuff. So if you're interested in the crazy good industrial sewing machine, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below where you can check this machine out. Honestly, it has made sewing so much more enjoyable and has allowed me to do so much, so many more things that I've wanted to do just because of the amount that this thing can handle. It goes from very delicate, thin fabric all the way up to heavy leathers. It's a phenomenal machine and I'm really excited to have one. It kind of, uh, it's going to allow me to do some of the things that I've always kind of wanted to do in the world of sewing. So. Thank you, Sellrite, for sending us, sending us this machine. I am sorry it's taking me so long to put this into a video, but I am genuinely very excited to have this, and I think if anyone's looking for a sewing machine that can handle more burly projects, you should definitely check out this machine or one of Sellrite's other machines. Phenomenal company. I've ordered so many things from them, fabrics, a lot of, most of those, uh, Cordura and pack cloth fabrics that I have I've ordered from them as well is this um, foam so I'll leave links in the description below where you can check this thing out and uh, yeah it's a beast of a machine somehow these four boxes contained <laughs> all of this so now I'm categorizing this is like our snow stuff um, camp stove and camp things lights all of our sleeping gear and now we have to decide what is going in these two bins what's going back in these and then what's going in that bigger one so that's where i'm at currently dylan's helping me over there on the sidelines <laughs> okay this is starting to look a lot better i have everything in bins for the most part so we have sleeping bags and pads in this one uh tents in this one that's like camp things, so cooking stuff, lights, stuff like that for the camp. This one is all rock climbing gear. This one is clothes and things that you wear. And then this one is like the snow bin. <laughs> so it's got snowshoes, a shovel, and um, some of our like water bladders are in there. And with our crampons. And then I'm leaving this bag here because we're about to go on a caving trip. So that's stuff that we're going to be taking. All of this is tree climbing stuff, so I need to put that in the new bin when I get it, the bigger bin. I'm out of breath. 
Oh my gosh. And then here's some more like knickknacky stuff that I need to figure out where to place those. And all of this is our friend's things that he is going to be getting this weekend because he's going on the trip with us. So he'll take that back with him. So other than that, we should be good. This bag has another bag inside of it, which will just sit in the closet. This pack needs to get hung like those are. If we still have our, ha our helmets, our helmets there and then more sleeping pads up there that's also caving that rope is going to be going in that bag so all those bins will just sit here but when we get the bigger bin that'll go along at the bottom maybe even two could fit in here with the smaller ones on top so we'll see how that goes that also needs to get hung that is need to go in the kitchen but making more progress closet is back together i went ahead and labeled these boxes so you have our most used things here and things we don't use that often on this side with our packs in the middle. I think I like that set up a lot better. And then Dylan has made some progress. I'm gonna show you guys how much of a beast this sewing machine is. I'm attaching the, uh, whatever you call these? Straps. Straps <laughs> and this front pouch all to this back piece. So there's probably, I don't know, six or seven layers of fabric. There are four layers of uh, one inch webbing and there's this 3D spacer, spacer mesh and foam. So this is a lot of material and watch how easy this machine goes through this material. This is something that I couldn't do, couldn't even come close to doing with my prior machine. And you just have so much control as you go through. So I can go as slow as I want or I can go fast. Pay attention to what I'm doing now. I to say don't lose control now. These two now and see the similarities. Okay, we're on the final stages here. I've got all of our pieces, the two side panels and the back panel laid inside out. And I've used the little clips to line everything up. Again, we have to sew it inside out. I'm actually gonna use this one inch binding and this, this binder that attaches to the sewing machine to do this. And that's gonna put a nice finished edge on the inside of the backpack on this main seam. Uh, but there's a lot of material we have to go through, uh, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. I've never done one this thick and binded, so. Take your time. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot to manage right now. A whole lot to manage. I feel like I almost should sew it first and then band it. I'm gonna sew it first. That's what I'm gonna do. So as you can see when I open this up, you can see the nice finished edges here. This is gonna be obviously the back of the backpack. So now I need to put the front of the backpack on. And because this doesn't make a just straight box here, it's going around this curve. This is a little complicated to set up. So um, I'm interested to see how this goes. But basically I'm just gonna put you know right side uh, together on the inside, we're gonna sew this thing inside out. 
I'm going to start at the top because that's the part that really matters that it's correct. And then we'll work around this curve and, and make this end up there. Whatever we need to do to make that happen. Fine. <laughs> wrestle this thing. Oh, this is ridiculous. Well, I'm to the hard part now, but... When you make this curve, you have to kind of bunch it up to make it work out right. Because mm -hmm. no, it doesn't really want to curve because it doesn't work like that. So you have to kind of just work with it here. And it never looks pretty now but it works i'm just going to try to flatten it as much as possible you can see when i flatten it it starts to make that curve better this is where having a machine that goes this slow is extremely useful See how it's starting to come up there, so I need to push some fabric into that and flatten. is now finally complete. His nephew is going to love it when he sees this. The last thing Dylan had to do this morning was this, um, I don't know what you call it, this cinch, I guess. Um, he finished it up last night, so we had to do that this morning, and it looks so good. Love the patch on there, of course. Dylan did a really, really great job with this. It's got the pocket up here, the pocket down here, and I think it's got a pocket. Yeah, it's even got a pocket inside of the backpack as well with the water bottle holders on both sides. I mean, this backpack's got everything and he is going to love it. So for the last two weeks or so, on and off, usually late nights, I've been working on a SketchUp model of our entire house so that we have something to reference for future builds and also just like an original copy of the way the house used to look. So as we start making renovations, we have that. I am not done, but I've got a lot of the exterior done, which is a good start at least. So. I mean, I don't really know what all to show you, but if I let this render, I've done everything. So I've got some layers that I'll turn off for you and show you. If we go to a roof, basically I've got metal on there. I've got uh, sheathing, which I can take off. If I get closer, you can see I have all the framing in the house, which is kind of crazy. If I turn off the rafters, you can see more of that. And then I laid every single one of these bricks, which I know seems absurd. Yes, I get it, but uh, it's so that I could get all these details within the brickwork, like the house actually is done. You can see all the geometry in here. But yeah, I've, I've been working on this for quite a while now. I'm gonna turn all this back on and uh, Next, I mean, I, I'm not fully done with the outside, but the next part will be definitely the inside and the back is pretty much all done. I've even added some trees in there. I'll show you a rendering in a second. I've been working on learning a render software called Inscape. So if I click over to that, you can see here's How the house wild that yeah, is. rendered and it's pretty much exact. I mean, like it, it's hard, like, <laughs> If I actually rendered this out, because this is a live rendering, so it's a little pixelated, it would look even better. 
but I can change the time of day in this. Let me go to the to the back side of the house. I can even change to a flying mode, which is kind of interesting. And I'll go I'll go through I'll go through this back window so you can check out the inside. <laughs> Look how realistic this looks. It's insane. Like it's like a game. Almost. Yeah, look at the inside. So I've got to do the ceiling joist in here, and then I'll be able to do the inside. I've literally built it the way that the house is built to spec using the um, the actual build plans from the house. So most of the details are exact. I can't tell you exactly where every stud is in the wall, but the headers they used, everything like that, is the same. The rafter lengths, their locations, all of that is is the same. So yeah, it's a it's pretty it's a pretty awesome thing to have. I'm excited to you know take it even further. And I don't know if I can do like a full on tutorial of this. I think that might be a lot. But if you're interested in learning more about it, uh, I might I might do something a little bit more detail about how I'm doing it. Uh, some tips and tricks I could give you is uh, decide whether you know how complicated you want to get because I'm going unnecessarily overboard with this. Or how much time you want yeah. to consume to this. Really, you don't need to go as overboard as I'm doing. I'm just doing it because I know that like we're going to be doing some fairly extensive work and it's going to be helpful to have this and I kind of enjoy the process. Uh, one last thing that I'll show you, which is very cool, that I, something that I'm working on currently. Uh, if I actually go to this terrain view and I turn off this parcel is this is actually kind of interesting to see. This is the exact size of our property uh, and the scale of the house and the position on the property, which is a cool overview to be able to see really truly how much space there is. And if I turn off this terrain and turn on location, then you can see like this is the actual topography of the land. I don't know if you can tell like that that's sloping and everything. So eventually I'm actually gonna add in the topography of the landscape here so that I can get a better feel for the way water's running on the property. And this I just pulled from Google Maps and it's actually really accurate based on you know my eye comparing it to this. I can already see that there's kind of a low spot right here in the front yard and I know this is where water tends to pull up. So it's interesting to see this pulling this off Google Maps and, and that'll be interesting to kind of put all that topography. I mean, you can see how much it slopes back here towards the back of the property. It's pretty significant. Like this is probably 10 feet compared to here, but your eye doesn't really see that. So anyway, uh, that is the model of the house. If you have any specific questions, because I really don't know what all to say about this, uh, I'll leave them in the comments section. So I've created a bit of a mess. I've actually already taken out everything that Molly spent a lot of time organizing, but it did make it a lot simpler for me to pick out all the gear we need for this weekend. Molly, I, and two of our friends are gonna do some caving and rappelling this weekend. So I'm just getting everything packed up and that will be in the next vlog. Well, depends on how much y'all want it to be in the next vlog. I might show a little bit, but if you really enjoy uh, this kind of stuff or think that you might like it, then leave us a comment and tell us that you would like to see some of it next week and we'll put more of it in the vlog. I'll show you some of the rope techniques that we're using to be able to safely do these things and you'll be able to see some of the coolest caves in all of Alabama, which little known fact has one of the highest density of caves on the planet, which is really interesting. So I'll show you quickly what I got going on here, just uh, for those of you that are interested before we wrap up this vlog. I'll start here with the main bags. I have uh, two uh, lengths of rope in here. 
I have about roughly 30 meters of, of this static cord in here and uh, 70 meters, I believe, of this dynamic cord. So basically, this bag is going to be sort of a sort of a safety rigging line here, a backup belay for our uh, rappel because we have some people that haven't done much of it, so I'm going to be backing that up. This has about uh, 80 meters of a static rope that's designed specifically uh, for caving. So this is what we'll use for actually rappelling one. I've got an Aztec kit, which is a safety sort of kit. It's a can be a three to one or a five to one pulley system. They can quickly hook up for rescue situations. Lots of Prusiks. I've talked about that on Instagram, I believe, and maybe even some of our other videos here. I love Prusiks, they're very useful. This is a uh, rappel rack or descender rack. This is used to actually rappel down the rope. You can add in friction by adding more of these bars. I have uh, Grigory, which is an auto traction sort of rappel uh, belay device. Uh, some ascending gear. Lots of uh, locking carabiners, a backup belay device, some pulleys, some uh, cordage, as well as some slings, some personal tethers more sending gear, helmets, and harnesses. Lots of gear, tons and tons of gear, as well as specific caving stuff. I like to carry around 30 feet of webbing just to use in emergency situations or be able to create a rope ladder in a situation where you've down climbed something that is really slippery and hard to get back up, things like that. Knee pads, elbow pads, gloves, flashlights, extra batteries. Very important, this is a nine hour uh, candle here. So this can provide warmth and light in a situation uh, that's an emergency. Very useful thing to have in a cave. And I don't know, a few other things, cameras, uh, medical kits, all kinds of stuff. Lots and lots of gear specific to this trip. And uh, that's where I'm gonna leave this video. I hope you guys are enjoying these vlogs. I am loving them, I'm enjoying watching them. Getting to see sort of this sort of behind the scenes is really enjoyable for me. And I, I hope you guys enjoy it as well. I like to share with you guys some of, uh, some of the other things that we enjoy in life, like caving and adventuring and doing things like sewing. So uh, yeah, that's where I'm going to wrap this video up and we'll see you guys next week.